All right, here we are on Falcon BMS uh, version 4.35, and we're gonna be starting up this beautiful F16 Block 50. Now, do notice that there are many versions of F16 in Falcon BMS, so yours may be different from this one, uh, but uh, it should be basically the same, just uh, minor differences. But if you are following in a Block 50, uh, you should have exactly the same experience. So let's jump into the cockpit. Now, uh, what we're gonna be using here is the three sweep method. We're basically gonna be doing three sweeps from left to right on the aircraft to get this baby started. Now, the first sweep is gonna be the before engine startup sweep, second sweep is engine startup sweep, and the third one after engine starting sweep. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get this going. So, as I mentioned, let's start all the way from the left on this uh, first sweep. We will start with the external lighting. Uh, the master I'm gonna be switching to norm, anti-collision on. I will keep the position on steady. Wing and tail and fuselage I will be turning on. Then we can go to the fuel panel and uh, set the knob to norm. Failure to do so uh, will feed engine with gravity only, and uh, of course they that may cause issues in flight. So set it to norm. Let's go into the electric panel now and uh, set it to battery. At this point in time, we could be doing the battery test, but it is uh, purely eye candy, so I won't be doing it unless it is necessary. I will not be doing it. One thing to notice right now, now that we have the battery on, do not rest your feet in the rudder pedals, as uh, braking can deplete the JFS, that would be the jet fuel starter accumulators, and uh, you don't want that. that, that can ruin your startup procedure. So feet off the rudder pedals, okay? Let's jump into the backup UHF radio, uh, set the left knob to both, right knob to uh, whatever you require. You may notice that it really isn't on, that's because we also need to turn on the uh, volume knobs. I'm gonna turn them just a little bit, you can turn them all the way on, but I will just go a little bit, the minimum, uh, just for sake of this video. I don't want noise from the radios uh, be messing things up. The missile should be also on, I'm gonna just lower the volume a little bit. Thread as well, a little low, and uh, if you're gonna be using ILS, here is where you would be having to turn that on and the intercom as well it should be all the way up i'm gonna have it a little low and there we go now we have a operational radio we, we can now receive radio transmissions and also transmit on the radio before starting the engine and uh, that is not something really useful in dcs but on bms it is it is very useful you it's actually a good practice to have your radio on as fast as possible continuing with the sweep uh, let's get up here and uh, let's lower the canopy, shall we? All the way down, there we go, and uh, let's lock the spider. Now another caution right here, the canopy, I recommend you doing it before attempting an engine start. If you do, if you operate the canopy during a JFS operation, it may result in a failed JFS start, so, so don't do that. It caused many, many failed starts uh, on my end, but now I have corrected my ways and uh, no issues. Okay, in this sweep we are going to be ignoring the, all the center panels, and uh, let's go straight to the right side on the lighting panel and uh, set this up as you require. I am not gonna move them because uh, I, it's quite sunny, it's beautiful, I have good visibility in my cockpit and all is good. Now, hiding behind whatever this is, there is the air conditioning panel. And this is very important. We gotta go to the air source and set this to norm. Now, failing to do so may result in equip hot caution. And no, I don't think you should be worried about just having a caution light on. What, what should worry you is that it will probably result in also equipment damage and malfunction. So yeah, make sure your air source is to norm. Also, many failed starts because I missed this. <laughs> Very important. Continuing with the sweep, we go all the way to anti-ice and we can set the anti-ice to auto. If we want to test the anti-ice, we would be setting it right now into the on position and at the end of the flight we would 
turn it back to off and see if there is a 10 degree drop in the FTIT gauge. Uh, but I'm not gonna bother with it, I'm gonna leave it at auto and uh, it's all good in the hood. Okay, we have now finished with sweep numero uno, let's now commence with sweep numero dos. Engine startup. This sweep is a little bit weirder, it, it kind of jumps a little bit between things and you kind of go like left to right and then right to left. But once you get the hang of it, I think it's uh, pretty simple. Let's do start on the left, of course, on the electric panel. Let's put the main power switch to main power. Failing to do so, uh, when you start your engine, your generator will not come online and uh, you will end up losing electric power. So, gotta put it on main power. Moving forward, let's make sure our throttle is on the cutoff position. We can switch between uh, cutoff and idle with this uh, pinky lever. If we click it, that's idle. We click it again, we definitely know what's in cutoff, so we're good to go. Okay, so a couple of things I need to tell you before we proceed with the starter. First thing is, we have two types of start. Start 1 and Start 2. Basically, this aircraft has uh, two JFS accumulators available. Start 1 only uses one of those. Start 2 uses both. That means that in Start 1, you can attempt a startup twice. On Start 2, you can only attempt a startup once. Obviously, as you are using more accumulators on Start 2, the chances of you getting a good start are increased on that attempt, but on start 2, even though you have a 50-50 chance of getting a good start, you have two chances. So yeah, you do the math and uh, choose the one that you like better. <laughs> we are going to be using the start 2. If we use the start 2, that we will, and it fails, uh, we're gonna have to recharge the JFS accumulators, and uh, that is done by the ground crew and it takes a, a, a little bit, so let's do our best not to mess this up. Now, very important, here on the right side of the center panel, there are a couple of things you really need to pay attention to. Uh, the first one would be the fuel flow, the second one would be the hydraulic oil pressure light, third one the oil pressure gauge, fourth one the nozzle position percentage, fifth one, the RPM of the engine gauge, sixth, the FTIT temperature gauge, and seventh, the hydraulic pressure gauges. Okay, so what are we expecting here? Once we engage the starter two, the hydraulic oil pressure light should be off between 30 and 35 RPMs. If it doesn't, and the oil pressure is below 15 PSI, we have a fault. We need to set the throttle to cutoff. It can happen, and it will happen eventually. So keep your eyes peeled. Next point, the FTIT gauge is very important. This gauge should increase proportionally to the RPM gauge and not go above 700 degrees Celsius. If it goes above 750, a hot start is present, set the throttle to cutoff or you will burn the engine down. And oh, you will. This is simulated. You will mess up your aircraft. So keep an eye on it. All right, so in summary, to confirm, we have a good startup. Fuel flow should be between 700 and 1700. Oil pressure should be above 15. Nozzle position should be above 94%. FTIT never, never above 800. Hydraulics should be at 12 o'clock position and we should have three gear green lights. Okay, that sounds simple enough, right? Uh, let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna go for star two. When RPM reaches 25, we're gonna move the throttle to idle, and then we're gonna keep a good eye on those gauges. Ready? Star two. Okay, looking at these gauges, I have a bind for the idle control, so I'm not gonna turn around to activate it, just know that. It takes a little bit to uh, start some RPMs. There we go, slowly but steadily. 10 RPMs. Twenty.
Almost 25. 25 advancing to idle. Good RPMs increasing. The FTIT is moving uh, very similarly to the RPM. It's around 40. Same with the FTIT. That's good. We got good movement. The, the oil pressure is off. Oil pressure is now well above 15. We got a fuel flow of 900 is well between uh, what we need. FTIT is doing just great at around 420 and the hydraulic pressure gauges are uh, both at 12 o'clock. So good startup. Let's just check those landing gear lights. Three of them are lit green. We are good to go. That was a good startup. Now after uh, starting the engines, we should probably go to the test panel and do a couple of tests, but in reality most of these tests are eye candy only, so I will be avoiding them. There really is no point. One test that is not eye candy uh, is the probe heat. That one you can test and uh, it will actually show if it's faulty or not, but the probabilities of it being faulty are quite low, so I'm not gonna bother with it. I'm just gonna put the probe heat to on. This is a good time to contact uh, the ground crew by pressing Tango and then pressing 1 and you'll see on the top right where it says ground EPU safety pin in place once we click on 1 will go away. That means the EPU safety pin has been removed. We could also be doing the EPU test but uh, it can be skipped so we will skip it. Now we're gonna jump all the way to the other side and that's basically well because we now have uh, engine power. Now the generator is working so now we can turn all of the uh, goodies on the avionics power panel. So all switches on. Let's just make sure the DED is alive. Not yet. There we go, it's alive now. So we can proceed on turning the EGI to norm to start the alignment process of the INS. Let's continue the sweep now backwards. We're going into the sensor's power. Uh, the radar altimeter will put it on standby. We don't want to give cancer to the ground crew. FCR to on. And the chin hard points, well, it all depends on what we have on them. Let's uh, let's take a look. Oh, there's a lot of... Oh, whoopsie. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. These guys are going into a, a sortie. Ah, that's the beauty of BMS. Okay. So we do have something on the left chin hardpoint. So let's get back in and turn on the left hardpoint. The right one can remain off. Okay, moving a little bit more, we go back to the DED. We make sure that the alignment process has commenced. It has, it's going well, so let's leave that at that. Let's go into the HUD, which is next, and turn that baby on with the ICP thumb wheel. Now, we have a lot of pretty failures and uh, warnings going on here. So what we're gonna do now, we're going to clear the faults by first going to the FLCS over here and uh, resetting that. There we go. Got rid of a failure. We need to get rid of some more. Let's go now into the test page over here and click on clear. And we can go back into the FCR. And yeah, we got rid of pretty much everything. Seat not armed is the only one remaining, but uh, we're not there yet, so we're good. Now that we are messing around with the MFDs, it is a good time to load our data cartridge. So let's go to DTE and uh, click on load. This will commence loading whatever we got on the data cartridge. Looking good. And loading complete. Let's go to the left and uh, go to the IFF panel and uh, we're gonna be turning the master knob into standby and the CNI to UFC. We are no longer using now the uh, backup radio, we are, we are now using the radios on the UFC. So now that that is done, uh, you should probably set the radios as you require. We can go to COM1, COM2 and select the preset according to what you need depending on the briefing of the mission. We can go back to check the alignment by going into list, N6, 
and here we are. Obviously, the alignment is now complete. That is, be that is because, well, I'm taking my sweet ass time. But uh, let's ignore the fact that it's ready. Let normally, at this time in the startup procedure, uh, you would be well doing it way faster, and the alignment wouldn't be just wouldn't be done just yet. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna pretend it is still aligning, even though we can see the alignment is complete. Okay, so ignore it for now. Okay, so that's it for the second sweep. That was the engine startup sweep. Now we are moving forward and going into the third sweep. This is the last one. Obviously, we must go all the way to the left. Now this would be the time to do the FLCS bit, but uh, that test is eye candy only, so we're not gonna be using it. Now what is really important and not eye candy at all is to check your manual trim panel and make sure the needles are well in the center. Uh, it can cause major trouble if they are not. Moving on, this would be also a great time to be doing the air refuel test. But that system rarely fails, so uh, the check can be skipped. We will skip it. Moving on with the sweep, ECM panel, let's put that switch to operational. After this, this is where uh, you could be doing the SEC check. Uh, but it's not mandatory for a ready to go jet, so we are not going to do it right now. Moving on with the sweep, we go over to the TWA panel and we, put, we power it on. Then we go to the CMS panel. We turn on the jammer, the RWR, chaffs, flares, and uh, you select the program that you wish to use and the mode that you wish to use. I'm gonna set auto for the time being. HMCS, you could turn it on at this time if you so desire, but I recommend doing so when fencing in. Moving on, set the stores configuration as you require. We are pretty heavy right now, so we're going CAT3. Moving on with the sweep, we would reach the RWR. We could uh, do a system test. It is good to see and hear the testing and uh, we know if we are not able to hear it or see it. Right now I am actually not able to hear it. That's because my volume is a little bit too low, but uh, I know it's there. We can also check out the launch missile test. And yeah, I can hear it. After finishing all that and being happy, we need to hand off the RWR. Failure to handoff will prevent system to warn from threats, so be sure to handoff. Very importante. So at this time, doing all of this in a timely manner, you still shouldn't have the aircraft aligned. So that being the case, this is a perfect time for you to mess around with all of the settings that you need to, uh, well, set up. You can uh, set up your navigation aids that you're going to require, your weapon settings, your pre-briefed joker, get ADIS information, uh, etc. You, you got a lot of things that you can do. After you finish that, you can confirm that there are no faults remaining. Uh, we do have the seat not armed, but that's okay. So we can go back and hit uh, FAC. There we go. Let's also click on that master caution. If you, want to, if you want to be reminded that the seat is not yet armed, you can uh, leave it on. Uh, I just, I, I, I know it's unarmed, so it's all good. Okay, so at this time, the alignment process should be finished. Obviously, ours is from quite a while ago. So we can confirm that the uh, INS alignment is complete. We can see the uh, line flashing on the HUD, the ready flashing on the DED. So we are definitely good to roll regarding the INS alignment. So we go to the EGI and set that bad boy to nav. Here in case we wanted to do the uh, anti-ice test, this is a good time to do it. I, I didn't do it, I had to add it in on when I told you guys. It's an auto, so I'm just gonna keep going, living life to the fullest. Let's activate the oxygen. We could also run the test at this very time. It is actually not a bad idea to do. I'm not gonna. Now we can set the parking brake, remove the wheel chocks, activate nose wheel steering, and if we don't have an obstacle above us, arm the, arm the seat. And turn the taxi lights on. And there we go, we are ready to taxi. As simple as that. Okay, and of course, when you reach the runway, uh, be sure to set your landing lights to, well, landing lights, 
put your radar altimeter to whoops radar altimeter and your IFF to norm and uh, yeah you can probably also put the, the position flash and you my friend are ready to party in Falcon BMS <laughs>